You're listening to the Meaningful Minutes with Nikki Olson podcast. This is a show for busy Latter-day Saint women who want to learn simple tools to feel confident and inspired in 10 minutes or less. Welcome on this episode, I will discuss the gospel and your mental health. So May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and it's always near and dear to my heart because I'm a therapist. And more than anything, I want to break down the stigma of mental health diagnoses and taking medication for mental health diagnoses. Also, it's my passion in my coaching business, which has morphed into this beautiful place of talking about mental health through a spiritual lens. So in honor of Mental Health Awareness Month, I thought it would be fun to talk about different aspects of mental health for the entire month to bring awareness and understanding of how God plays a role in your mental health. So this episode, I will focus on explaining how your mental health relates to the gospel. And then I'll have a separate episode this month where I'll dive into specific um, diagnoses like depression, anxiety, ADHD, and trauma. And I want to take an episode and focus on something that I unfortunately have become specialized in due to the location where I work, which is suicide. And I want to help you know what to look for and how to respond to someone who is having thoughts of suicide. So if you don't want to miss any of these episodes because you're feeling really connected to them, be sure to hit the follow button on your podcast app so it notifies you when a new episode releases. Also, if you know someone who these episodes might benefit, please share it with them. Okay, so let's get started about how to view your mental health through the lens of the gospel. And I'm going to answer five common questions that I get when I talk about mental health through a spiritual lens to help you understand better yours or someone else's mental health challenges. So understanding is a big piece of the healing journey. I notice that many women with um, that have a lot of turmoil over mental health challenges is because they have misconceptions about their mental health journey. And then this keeps them really stuck in the turmoil and feeling that distant from God. So my hope is that this information may help you or someone you love get untangled from those misconceptions and feel that healing power that Christ can offer you. So the first question I want to address that comes up frequently is, did I do something wrong to cause these mental health challenges? First of all, mental health challenges have many contributing factors. So it's really not like a black and white answer, yes or no. But I found a great explanation on the church's website, and they have a whole page devoted to questions about mental health, which I feel like is a really great resource if you want to check out. But I want to quote them exactly on this so that you can have assurances that these are not just my thoughts, but church supported as well. So the church's website says in John 9 2, the Savior's disciples asked him about a blind man. And the master said, Master, who are they? <laughs> That's the master didn't say, say, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he be born blind? Jesus answered his disciples and taught them, neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the, but that the works of God should be manifest in him. So from this brief exchange, we can learn that many afflictions, including mental health challenges, are not the result of sin and that we can be healed. Many factors contribute to mental health challenges, genetics, environment, impairing accidents, life circumstances, and at times, choices. Regardless of the contributing factors, we can draw strength from the Savior for hope and healing. We should not automatically conclude that mental health challenges are directly caused by sin or that it is a character weakness. And then the website also says mental health challenges can impact anyone, regardless of education, geography, faith, calling, or family. They are nothing to be ashamed of and should be met with love. I love how this takes the shame and guilt away from knowing that anyone is susceptible to mental health challenges. And it's not a blanket answer that sin causes mental health challenges. 
There are many situations where one is not at fault of the mental health challenges coming on. However, choices such as substance abuse and engaging in behaviors that the savior would not necessarily approve can cause mental health diagnoses to develop. But I love the most important part in this quote, that regardless of where the mental health challenges come from, the savior can offer hope. When you put your focus on the savior, he can guide you in your specific circumstances because he's already experienced your specific, unique situation. He knows in every moment that you need, um, every moment what you need, and has the enabling power to provide it for you. So staying close to the Savior can help you know if there is something you can change in your life to help you with your mental health challenges. Okay, the second question I hear a lot around mental health in the gospel is, why doesn't God take this away from me? It's true, God is very powerful and can do anything. However, God does not come in and take all things away from us. Remember that scripture from just a minute ago about the man's blindness and where it came from. The Savior said that we are to experience a fallen world with fallen bodies so that the works of God should be manifest in him. These works of God can be manifested in so many ways and taking something away isn't the way, only way God can show up for you in your challenges. Sometimes healing can come in small and simple ways over the course of time. And sometimes relief and guidance and help is given through the enabling power of Christ because some healing comes at the resurrection. No matter how God shows up for you or your loved one in your mental health challenges is not a reflection of his love for you or your worth as a daughter of God. The key is allowing God to show up in the way he knows is best and not expecting God to show up in a certain way that you think is best. Okay, the third question I get is sort of related to this last one. But why do I feel like God has abandoned me in my mental health challenges? The reason you'll feel distant from God in your challenges is because this is a part of the plan of salvation. The plan of salvation is that it it uh, <laughs> the plan of salvation is a plan that includes agency and choice. God wanted each of us to be able to choose for ourselves. So God had to create something that would allow for agency and opposition. Opposition occurs in all things inside of us. And that opposition is called the natural man or the carnal mind. In the scriptures, it talks about the natural man being an enemy to God, which just means opposing force or without God, um, just without God. So King Benjamin did a really wonderful job in Mosiah explaining the natural man and its effects. So it's in Mosiah 2.11. He said that all people are subject to all manner of infirmities in body and mind. And I also love President Eyring's description of what it's like to be in the state of the natural man and not feel God. He said the pavilion that seems to intercept divine aid does not cover God. It occasionally covers us. God is never hidden, yet sometimes we are covered by a pavilion of motivations that draw us away from God and make him seem distant and inaccessible. Our own desires, rather than a feeling of thy will be done, create the feeling of a pavilion blocking God. God is not unable to see us or communicate with us, but he is, but he may be unwilling to, um, but we may be unwilling to listen or submit to his will and his time. Because of our thoughts, the natural man can put up, up a pavilion blocking God's power from reaching us. Learning skills to put that natural man to sleep and remove that pavilion is what all of my mental health skills are based around. That's really my specialty as a mental health therapist. And I have a fun option for you to learn these skills if you stay tuned to the end. But first, let's dive into that fourth question, which is how can I help a loved one who struggles with mental health challenges? Well, the first thing to remember is that you're not in charge of your loved one's healing. What you do What you do have control over is the environment you create around your loved one. 
the environment you create can help him feel, can help your loved one feel more comfortable asking you for help or advice and feeling safe talking about their experiences. One of those ways to create a safe environment is to watch the words you choose to use about mental health and make sure they're not stigmatizing words. So common words that are used to describe others with mental health challenges that are not appropriate can create or make your loved one feel unsafe to open up to you about their mental health challenges. So these words are crazy, unstable, mental, disturbed, or insane. Also looking at avoiding using words to describe yourself or others like bipolar, OCD, ADHD, or schizophrenic. This stigmatizes those diagnoses and sometimes some feel, makes people feel like there's something wrong with them if they receive that diagnosis. Also, another great way to create an environment is to listen without judgment. Don't offer advice or tell them why they're getting the results that they're getting. They likely already know that. What they need is a safe place to talk out what they are thinking without judgment. When this type of environment is offered, they're more likely to hear their solution coming from within themselves, which is really coming from God, um, giving them revelation as they talk. So you really want to provide an environment for the still small voice to be present in your conversations and not your voice to be the only voice that's present. Okay, hopefully that will help you create that safe environment to help your loved ones with their mental health challenges. So the last question I get is, how can I incorporate spirituality into my mental health journey, healing journey? A lot of times women are so surprised when I teach them how to incorporate their mental health skills they're learning into gospel language. This really helps you feel like you aren't separating the parts of you that have to be worked on separately. They actually complement each other really well. So if you're wanting to learn these mental health skills, I actually have a self-paced video course that will teach them, teach these skills to you. It's called the connection course. And in this video course, you're going to learn four mental health skills through a spiritual lens to help you connect better with God, yourself, and others. These skills will help you remove the pavilion that the natural man creates and return to God to receive his power, love, and healing. This course is also really helpful if you're supporting someone who has mental health challenges. You can learn the skills to stay connected to God and your loved one when these challenges arise. So if you're interested in these skills, check out the link in my show notes that give you uh, the access to the course immediately after you purchase it. All right. I hope to see you follow along this month when we are talking about mental health through a spiritual lens and um, be sure to hit that follow button so you don't miss out on anything. See you next week. I hope these minutes you spent with me were meaningful, helped you feel inspired and more confident. If you liked today's episode, check out the show notes for links to other episodes you might like too. And while you're there in my show notes, look for the links to my website, social media, and free handouts for remembering how to implement the skills. Thank you for listening to the Meaningful Minutes podcast with Nikki Olson.